Good morning. Good morning. Today there is a bulk of presentation huh? in the morning. Uh, so uh, I will go through the uh, the presentation, which will be uh, increasing the access uh, of care in the community. But uh, uh, before that, maybe we will uh, just have a few slides uh, regarding uh, where we are in the country when it comes to the the strategic and the, the health sector, and uh, particularly the, the, the health care providers. And then uh, we will go through the different interventions, both in the wash and also the health. Then uh, we will conclude in my slide, giving a few recommendations regarding uh, how we can you know, improve where we are and also what could be the next steps. Uh, the outlines of uh, my presentation will compose of background. I will go through the background. Uh, and then uh, we will see uh, what are the critical interventions increasing the access of care. And lastly, uh, we will see the achievements and the challenges and also the opportunities lie there and how we can take on that. Maybe uh, this is, uh, I visited before I came to this meeting, uh, a city almost close to the capital city of Somalia, Mogadishu, for 250 kilometers, uh, a population uh, close to 400,000 people. They have uh, a cholera treatment center, which is called uh, the Behau. So I got an opportunity uh, to meet that young lady. Her name is Shukri. She's all one years old. Uh, she has been admitted early in the morning on the 20th September, uh, vomiting and diarrhea for one day. And then uh, after assessment or triage, she found you know, uh, to have sunken eyes and uh, not able to drink at all. So the health worker you know, treated her as a plan C and started immediately admission and then given her the IV fluid, mainly the ringer lactate. After a few hours, almost six hours, that is the midday uh, of that day I met her. She was playing and uh, she recovered and went to the plan C, which is always, you know, almost, you know, she was uh, drinking the ORS. So this is just a few a classical example I can give you starting my presentation, which is a scenario. Uh, this is uh, the background of... Uh, Somalia is located in Horn of Africa, uh, estimated service for 637,657 kilometers square, and it has the largest uh, coastline in Africa, uh, uh, over 3,333 kilometers along Gulf of Aden to North and Indian, Indian Ocean to the East and South. We have a border, uh, Djibouti, along in north and west, Ethiopia to the west, and Kenya to the southwest. Uh, almost we are suffering, you know, huge climate change the past couple of decades in terms of droughts, floods, and October also we are feeling the El Nino heavy floods in the country. This is a summary for the epidemiological status for cholera in the country. Uh, starting from uh, week one up to week 37 until 7, 11 to 17 September, we have almost a cumulative cases close to uh, 13,243. And uh, uh, almost uh, this is uh, a current ongoing Horn of Africa drought that has been huge impact to the country to the different levels. Uh, I will not go through do all this because I want to move very fast, emphasizing you know, the main point of my presentation. So let me just uh, give you a snapshot for the, the status of the, when it comes to the, the linkages between the, uh, the risk, the vulnerabilities, and also the hazards. Uh, we have a risk, which we divide into the, the vulnerabilities and also the hazard. 
when we are talking about the vulnerabilities, we just picked up the community and where we are when it comes to the health system. So uh, I can just give you an example when it comes to the community where we are. Examples like the low socioeconomic status, which is almost a poverty stage, uh, poor health and also the wash care services, uh, economic downturn, and huge climate change, and also internal displaced people. We have almost close to 3 million to the internal displaced people in the country. Uh, when it comes to the health system, uh, we are struggling poor access quality of healthcare and also shortage of the medicine and supplies, inadequate pool of health workforce, huge turnover for the entire sector for health workforce, uh, and also uh, low reporting information system uh, for health and also surveillance both of them. This is just to give you a snapshot where we are when it comes to the, the status of the, the health in the country. Uh, the, the hazards or the trigger factor, the trigger effects, we can take uh, multiple outbreaks, infectious diseases like the, the measles, the cholera, and we always suffer for uh, different factors. Droughts, climate change like droughts, floods also is part of the, you know, the hazards we always, you know, suffer. Uh, the conflicts, they also the tourists and also the IDPs, internal displaced people. These are, you know, the huge factors we are suffering in the country. Just this is a, a, the snapshot of the, the linkages between the hazard, the, uh, the other ways of round. Uh, let me just come to the what we are doing on the the interventions of the health when it comes to the how we are increasing the access of the cholera treatment. Of of course, there is a framework for the health security and also the universal health coverage. As a country, we have a roadmap up to 20, 2030 how we can make sure that everyone has access for the care, starting from the community to the up to the health. Um, uh, facility level without, you know, uh, hardship or financially. Uh, also, uh, we downgraded for that uh, framework into the operational and uh, making sure that to have the capacity to strengthening the preparedness and response for each of the, you know, public health emergencies all the public health threats, and also uh, to have a very clear indicators when it comes to the, the National Health Strategic Plan. Uh, so, as part of the implementation at the ground level, we have uh, the essential package of health services from different levels, starting from the community to the primary health care unit, to the, the maternal and child health center, to the district hospitals, up to the, up to the uh, you know, regional uh, referral hospital. These are the level of cares we provide when it comes to the, uh, you know, the essential package of health services. In another hand, we have uh, two, two important documents, which is the cholera preparedness and response plan, and also the cholera preparedness and the response strategy, which guide overall how the multi-sectoral collaboration and how the health can also make sure as part of the, you know, uh, providing access to the care when it comes to the managing for the cholera cases. And this is also a combination of how we can also make sure to strengthen our capacity of the health system as part of also reaching the health security and also the, the universal health coverage. We have also the same health. We have also have the WASH intervention, which is more on leading a sector of Ministry of Water, uh, which is uh, uh, making sure that to have the frameworks of the National Development Plan and also the health sector strategic plan, but also downgrading to the action plans, we have the wash sector policy, both the two sectors, the health and also the, the, the Minister of Water. And also uh, one other important for the Minister of Health is having the national hygiene pr uh, promotion strategy. Uh, at operational level, we share also the cholera preparedness and response plan and the, the EPHS, which is as part of the providing not only just access of care, also providing access of safe drinking water. Uh, this is uh, what I would like also to emphasize, what we are doing when it comes to the access, increasing access to the community. We have a larger program which is called the Community Health Worker, which also uh, 
uh, focuses on how we can integrate you know, the essential package of health services, providing awarenesses and also the referral mechanism to the health facility. We have a different uh, strategies, but uh, I will just uh, take one of the most critical you know, uh, strategic objectives, which will give us how we are increasing the capacity and also the access of the community care, which is promoting, providing comprehensive, integrated, and also equitable community-based health services, including both in the development and also the humanitarian responses. So this is also one of the, the, the critical strategic objectives we have when it comes of the scaling up of the access of the care to the community level. Uh, this is a summary of uh, when it comes to the the same of uh, you know how we uh, how we can reach improving the access of the care to the to the you know uh, uh, to the level of care when it comes to the the outcomes. Uh, how we are also focusing on you know providing uh, you know access to the children and also the maternal and also the the newborn you know. Uh, services uh, uh, mo most critical you know element is also making sure that to have adequately and also quality of comprehensive integrated you know health services that also guide you know how we can also make sure for having a sustainable program that will also uh, guide uh, where we are we are we are, we are we're heading to the uh, to the increase in the access uh, this is a summary of uh, different levels of the providing different level of the access through the community. And this is uh, the, how we are managing, uh, I will come to the next slide, how we are managing the cholera case management when it comes to the, uh, you know, the different levels. And this is uh, a summary of the, the latest, you know, uh, updated, the latest, uh, the, you know, uh, uh, cholera case management guideline, which we developed in 2017, 2017. And there's a plan also to revise and update for that, you know, uh, guideline. And it gives you the different uh, common plans, plan A, plan B, and plan C, and how you also provide and what is important. Here we will focus on the, uh, different, you know, uh, the plans when it comes A, which is more on using when there's no sign of dehydration, starting using the ORS, and also when there's a plan P, it's always when we can, you know, shift and starting the, the ORS, which is a moderate dehydration. The plan C is always giving the IV fluids, so uh, keeping in your mind, I will show you the next slide, how we are dividing to the providing access of the care when it comes to the, the the interventions of the community where we are and how we are you know strengthening and also when it comes to the, the different plan B and plan C when it comes how we are also managing at the health facility level uh, this is uh, a summary of the when it comes uh, our uh, what they are what they are doing for the, our community health workers uh, this is a purely uh, we are we are we, we train them and they are providing uh, actually we are there is a plan also to scale up the hot spot districts for the ORP you know uh, points or the oral dehydration points and this is where we are focusing to give them uh, as long as they are no you know uh, uh, doing a triage or there is no sign of dehydration they can go easily you know given the plan A which is more on you know the oral dehydration you know, a point which is more managed on the, the community health workers. The ORIBs is both goes to the A, you know, and, and, and B, and this is uh, uh, also, you know, uh, is part of the uh, a combination of the CTUs and also the CTCs, which is more on, you know, uh, the health facility level management. And this is uh, uh, where we can also manage and see the severe and also the complicated, you know, cases. Uh, this is a summary. Recent, maybe some of them we closed. We have almost closed to 
17, the entire 17, uh, you know, uh, 17 uh, cholera treatment centers, but some of them, uh, it's very difficult to call for the cholera treatment center because of the layout and also, uh, you know, the managing facility for, you know, the cholera treatment center. But we have the largest, which is located in the capital city. It's called the Benadin Hospital CTC, which is managing almost close to uh, uh, 3,000 cases, which is equivalent to the entire accumulative cases for 13,000 up to 19, you know, percent. Also, we have uh, a newly you know, uh, CTC, which is, uh, you know, uh, we, we had a previous uh, outbreak in the in the district, which is uh, located on the, you know, borderline in Kenya because there was an outbreak. And we, we, we just, uh, you know, uh, uh, focused on how we can move on it. Very interesting uh, uh, slide, which is uh, most of the, you know, uh, Plan C management at facility level, they received the IV fluids, which is equivalent almost, which is equivalent almost severe cases for 40 percent. So we have a three facilities. Yes, we have three regions which has been admitted uh, cases uh, close to 2,573. The first region, the second region, 1,165 admission. The first region is close to 30 percent severe. The second region close to a 28 percent severe. The last region is 53% severe, which is almost a combination shows us the, all the cases, which is you know uh, approximately for 40%. But one of the interesting, you know, is all these you know cases has been provided and admitted and also received antibiotics plus uh, IV fluid and they recovered 100%. This is also the summary of the map shows uh, where we are on the. The cholera hot spots, which is shows uh, the you know the the blue line, which is the most you know district that pass through the the rivers. So that's where you know we always you know uh, see the cases for cholera. This is the last slide, uh, which is summarized uh, on the achievements. Of course, different. Uh, we have the community health workers guideline, the, the health facility guideline, and also we expanded uh, the, the, the capacity of the lab. And also, uh, we activated, we always have a permanent national task force for cholera management or the cholera task force. Um, uh, always, the challenge is there is no you know, a direct funding support in treating for the cholera case management. So this is a huge financial constraint. Usually, the response comes when there is an outbreak through the humanitarian response. This is a huge you know, challenge on focusing how we can manage. Competitive priority is part of the challenge, and also the human resource turnover, because we train a lot of human resource. When there's an outbreak, they, they, you know, they left or they are not there. Fragmentation of the community health workers also is a challenge, because sometimes you are not focusing, giving them as a priority for treating and providing the ORP as point, but also they are providing other you know, interventions like nutrition. Uh, proper layout for the treatment centers is also one of the challenges. Supplies also is another challenge. And and the on-job training, dissemination of the job aids on the world is also the critical uh, you know, challenge we identified and we are looking how we can uh, look it. Opportunities is uh, uh, quite interesting. Also, we are planning to review and update the latest uh, cholera treatment guideline, both at health facility and the community level, and also providing on-job training, implementation of the triage and also the case management, uh, providing you know the, the treatment guidelines, job aids on the walls, identifying the key trainees on outbreak response. This is one of the critical, you know, important opportunity we are looking how we can make sure. And also to ensure that admission is based on the severity, we identified most of the, of the admission cases is not, you know, as severe. So we are just reducing the cross infections for the facility and how we can make sure that they have a proper, you know, admission uh, uh, treatments. I think uh, that's it. This is uh, the beautiful city of capital city Mogadishu. And uh, thank you so much, all of you.